Welcome to this tutorial on how to read the roadbook in Dakar Desert Rallies Pro Mode. If you struggle to reach checkpoints and get lost often, or if you can't perform well in this mode, this is the video for you. First, I'll explain the waypoint system and every type of checkpoint and touch on how they work. Then, I'll go through the interface, showing you which parts of the HUD you'll need to pay attention to, and explaining in detail how to read the roadbook. Finally, I'll give you some additional tips on navigation so that you've got everything you need to jump right into Pro Mode. Let's get right into it. Waypoints are the lines of your roadbook. They will help you find your way around the stage. Some of them are checkpoints, which will update your roadbook position, recognizable by their colored backgrounds. Waypoints are white, and you may need to manually scroll them on your roadbook. Some, including checkpoints, have a red border that indicates caution. These should be traversed carefully. The yellow C indicates a hidden waypoint, which won't have a GPS marker, but will update your roadmap and should not be missed. The blue M is a regular GPS checkpoint, visible on your GPS from 1.5 kilometers. They are mainly used in off-road sections. The red S indicates a safety checkpoint. Visible on your GPS from 2.5 kilometers, they are here to help you anticipate hard checkpoints. Straying off the path and going too fast will have you run into dangerous terrain or rocks. The orange DZ marker indicates the start of a speed limit zone. They range from 30 to 110 km per hour, sometimes including a purple stem control, in which case the AI will take control. These will always be indicated in advance, and you should be prepared to slow down and avoid penalties, even if the AI takes control. A green FZ marks the end of the speed limit zone. Checkpoints have a 200 meter activation radius. Missing too many checkpoints will result in disqualification while waypoints are optional and serve as indication. Stay aware of the differences between waypoints and the different checkpoint types to have an idea of what to expect next and where to look. Now, let's take a look at the UI and how you can use it to your advantage. Most of it is also available on your dashboard or in your cockpit. On the left, you'll see your progress bar, showing you how many checkpoints are left and how far away the next ones are. This can be largely ignored we can help you know if you're on the right track. On top, you'll have your current kilometer counter, the cap you're heading towards, and the GPS direction you should follow when you get close to a checkpoint. Keep your eye on it when you're off-road to avoid getting lost, and compare your total distance to the roadbook to situate yourself. Most importantly, the roadbook in the bottom right corner is what you'll need to check regularly to navigate. The first line should be the last waypoint you crossed, while the middle one will be your focus. Let's look at it in more detail. The first column is distance. The big number will correspond to your total kilometers when you are supposed to reach it, and the small number is the distance from the last waypoint. This will help estimate your time to waypoint. Your total kilometers on top of the screen will be updated with this number when you reach a checkpoint, highlighted with a color and letter. The middle column is the most important one. It's a diagram of the waypoint, directing you towards the next one. You will need to follow the blue line that represents the turn you will need to take at the waypoint. Try to match it with what you're seeing ahead of you to determine when to turn and in which direction. A full blue line means you need to follow a dirt track, while a dotted line can mean traces or off-road. During off-road sections, a yellow number will be present at the top right, indicating the cap or bearing you should be aiming for. Pay attention, if this number has a MOY written under it, MOY standing for moyenne, average in French, this will be an estimation of roughly which direction you should head for, but you should stay on the track or traces. On this diagram, you will also see other lines and dotted lines, significating other traces you're not supposed to follow. Rocks, vegetation, buildings, and more. These can be useful to understand where the stage goes next, but you can ignore them. However, pay attention to red markings, indicating dips, bumps, and dangers, usually an indication to slow down or at least be careful. Finally, the right column includes additional information, like presence of traces, bumps, water, rocks, and other hazards. The co-driver will read these out, but reading them yourselves when you are unsure or alone will be useful. Now that I've told you everything you need to know to understand the roadbook, here are some tips. First, let's talk about your co-driver. He can be useful, but he can't be relied on. His calls are too late and often confusing. Listen to him to have some early warnings, but rely mainly on your roadbook. He will also tell you when you get lost and how to get back to the last known point, but this will also be the case when you take an alternate route that he doesn't like, so if you're confident, you're on the right track, ignore him. Every vehicle class plays differently and will require different roadbook etiquette. Trucks are slow to react and will require you to prepare more for what's ahead, so check early. Bikes and quads don't have a co-driver, so you rely exclusively on the roadbook and won't know when you're lost. 
They also require more attention on screen, so it's harder to check the roadbook frequently. If you don't have the time to check the roadbook, or if you're not at ease with it, here's what to prioritize. The distance in total kilometers, the blue line's shape, a cap if present, and any danger signs. This is the most easy to decipher information and will almost always guarantee your passage. If you notice you're lost, either because the road doesn't match the roadbook anymore, or because the co-driver tells you, don't panic. Turn around and retrace your steps if you remember them, and find the last familiar place, then match the roadbook with it and try again. Slow down before a waypoint with a red border, a sharp turn, or when you see a dangerous signs or bump coming up. It's not always necessary, but it can save your life. When you're following a competitor, don't stop navigating, because it might get lost or make sudden change in the trajectory that you won't have anticipated, causing lost time or crashes. One last side note, at the date of recording, the roadbook doesn't automatically move forward when you reach waypoints like it does with checkpoints. Outside of bikes and quads where that's normal, this is a known bug and it should be fixed soon. In the meantime, remember to manually cycle your roadbook when you reach a waypoint. Alright, thank you all for watching and I hope this tutorial was clear and informative. Please let me know if you have questions or any feedback in the comments down below. Like the video if you want more people to see it and subscribe to be informed when we start our Dakar Desert Rally League here at the ERC. See you around!